Hey guys, it's Troy with another pen video, and this one may actually take a little while just because of the amount of material I've got to cover. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we're almost at the next subscriber uh, level, and my giveaway is coming up. I think we just need a, like another five subscribers or so, and uh, I've got a buttload of uh, pens and inks and notepads and uh, maybe even a t-shirt or two to give away. So uh, just be watching for that within uh, hopefully the next couple of days, and we'll have another video uh, in probably even with Matthew sitting here and we'll be doing our subscriber giveaway for that so just uh, be on the lookout for that so that being said I know it's been uh, a week or two so a couple of weeks since I put out a video uh, we got back uh, less than a week ago from a family vacation which kind of plays into this video a little bit and I'll show you why here in a little bit on that so um, wanted to share with you some of the things that I picked up uh, that showed up while we were away on vacation and I've been able to play with uh, and something that I picked up while on vacation. So uh, first and uh, foremost, let's play with this one. This is a Waterman 100 year pen. Now Waterman uh, had uh, back in like the 1930s came out with the 100 year guarantee basically to tell you how great their pens were uh, they came out and said uh, we'll give a 100 year guarantee well eventually the, uh, the the US government came down on uh, grandiose claims uh, for marketing and Waterman was among those affected I have seen some fantastic examples of the Waterman 100 year pen some are smooth and some have been ribbed the bigger ribs uh, are generally the first year and I've seen some fantastic examples uh, of those particular pens uh, but just quite honestly it's more than a mortgage payment <laughs> for one of those pens and I see them and I drool over them I said oh they're so gorgeous the uh, the red and the and the green transparent lucite are just wonderful this one I, I suspect may be a bit of a Franken pen because the cap does say that it's uh, made in Canada um, and then uh, according to Richard Bender's website if you've got a red tip on the end like this then the red tips are a replacement uh, and not the original tip on it so um, that didn't bother me and quite honestly because I got this a whole lot cheaper <laughs> I'll be honest with you at a fraction of the cost um, you'll see right here there's a, a, a chip there yeah that didn't come that way um, the horrendous bone chilling feeling that when you drop a pen and it falls out of your pen sleeve and it falls and it breaks and this tip just breaks right off and along with it uh, some of the celluloid uh, that this one is made out of along with it and you've got pieces on the floor and you and you go no well okay um, yes it was a one syllable word or two that I let out but it wasn't no uh, but um, so here was my pen and I had I picked it up and I was able to super glue it on and quite honestly I had a little super glue on my finger so there's a little bit on the tip there so it, so I'll see if I can clean this up some but this is a great writing pen all right from probably 1942 or so and uh, did a little bit of research on it and it's not the first year not the second year this was made concurrent with some of the smooth sided with so, the smaller ribs uh, but here's what I will say it even on the nib it says that it's a Waterman 100 year pen um, and it actually is a great writer I mean if you like uh, vintage pens like I do I don't love just vintage I got some new ones uh, but still this is a a great writing pen look how smooth that is and I believe I put uh, into this one some Waterman Mysterious blue. So, I mean, if you can find them, and I know you can find these out there. I think I got this one from FountainPenRecycler.com, uh, where he uh, fixes and uh, uh, restores pens. But this one has a, look at that line variation. Look at that flex on this thing. Absolutely tremendous. A smooth writing, and yes, you can hear some feedback but this has written very well and I was using it quite a bit this past Sunday um, but great writer smooth nice fine line 
and if you need it to go more than fine you just bear down a little bit and you get a medium line and of course you saw the variation here so um, nice looking nice feeling feels great in the hand uh, vintage pen and I found on this one click click and you're as about as close as you're going to be lining up um, your lever uh, up with your clip on this one so anyway uh, that's one pen that's probably the first one I played with and I said mm, uh, all right I know I've got a, a basket full of uh, pens here and that was one of them the next one is a brand I'm not really familiar with I picked this up off from massdrop.com and by the way since then they have changed their name from mass drop to just drop so uh, but Regal uh, is a brand I'm not all that familiar with and so they had a uh, uh, an offer on mass drop and I went ahead and I picked it up and they had some red ones they had some black ones they had some blue ones and uh, this I do believe was the British Museum design and they had another one for like the Royal Crown design um, when I got it I said I don't think that's the one I had ordered but apparently I did order th this one um, I wanted the the British Museum design here as opposed to the the Royal Crown design that was on here uh, but I didn't recall it being like this on the top um, of the finial of that pen so um, I have not inked this up and I have no idea how it writes yet it was like 35 bucks I figured I'd give it a shot and take the risk it did not come with a converter you had to pay extra for a converter I did not pay the extra for the converter I just happened to have it uh, I've got a, you know some drawers uh, full of uh, converters for Standard International and uh, so I threw it in here it did come with a, a Standard International cartridge and so it's got that black lacquered metal gold tone but uh, so a pen by Regal have no idea uh, don't know anything about the brand don't know really anything about this particular pen other than what I saw in mass drop so there you go uh, the next one I wanted to share with you is a uh, another Waterman this is the Waterman graduate it is a lower end Waterman it was manufactured uh, pretty much to be a student pen hence the name graduate um, so it the Waterman did these particular pens back around 1980 70 to 80 or so uh, and then they did another production run from like 1995 to 2010 mostly in Europe um, and I've got some plastic ones some plastic pens uh, that are the low-end student pens but this was meant to be a step above that so you've got the the metal the chromed metal and you've got the same fine nib on it although this nib on this one is more appropriate to the style of pen than on those plastic ones that I've got and it came with um, a convert a cartridge rather not a converter but I do believe it came with a, a, a standard Waterman cartridge and I went ahead and I put that in there and uh, so you know originally these were marketed and sold for about 20 American dollars which is not a bad price uh, considering that you got a fountain pen uh, that is a decent quality made by a decent company and I paid only $16 or so for this and uh, new old stock never been used and if I could find it I know that there's a box for it sitting around here ah here it is I knew it came <laughs> in a box here somewhere so I found that it came in a, in a Waterman box um, that uh, that's what it came in and had the, the generic Waterman instructions and it sat here in here with a cartridge that was set here so um, I did manage to get the Waterman graduate in a nice box like that so um, let's see how this one writes as well so I did ink it up since I just put in the cartridge and you know what for a, a, a cheap student pen for $16 metal chromed uh, with a, you know they've got the typical Waterman bifurcated clip on it um, this actually the Waterman graduate I'm not a fan of fine nibs so I balked at it but I said for 16 bucks all right I'll go ahead and try it um, it's got you know a, a metal a, a steel nib I really didn't expect anything 
fantastic out of it. I expected it to be a little scratchy. Well, this one actually wasn't too bad. It was better than I thought it was going to be uh, for the nib that's on it and for the, the price point. And knowing that some of the, the Waterman student pens that I've got here in my drawer uh, tend to be a little bit scratchy, uh, this one here on a fine nib actually did a lot uh, better than I thought. It was a lot smoother than I thought it was going to be. And once that ink cartridge and the ink finally permeated into the pen, and it took a while, um, it actually did very, very well. So uh, that's not bad at all. I mean, 16 bucks, and I've got a, a pretty good pen. All right, the next one I wanted to share with you is another vintage pen. I got it from PeytonStreetPens.com. I was just poking around looking for something to play with, and I got this one. All right, this is the, their, their standard box that it comes in, and this is from the 1930s. If you like lever fillers, if you like classic pens, and look at that jade. Um, it's not the most beautiful jade that I've ever seen, but at the price point, it's actually not bad. And it's a junior size pen, so it's a little shorter than I like. I definitely um, like chunkier or and lengthier pens than this, but for what I got, not bad. So you've got the, the double ring here, and you've got a, a clip here, and you've got the flat top on the top and the flat on the bottom. Now this particular pen is a Belmont. Belmont was a, uh, a third tier manufacturer and they made this particular pen for Rexall drugs. You can even see right down here Rexall store. Y you probably remember Rexall drugs. I mean we had a Rexall drug store in my hometown and uh, they were mighty popular uh, during the 19th, uh, 1900s anyway during the 20th century and uh, you know, um, you could buy just about anything at a Rexall drugstore. As a matter of fact, I think during the 1990s, uh, Rexall even became a multi-level marketing company uh, trying to sell a bunch of products uh, that are over-the-counter stuff in commodities, consumable commodities. Uh, and I don't even know if they're still in existence now. But uh, this particular has a uh, pen has a warranted nib on it. Maybe I'll get you some better pictures of that. And you've got that uh, flared out. Um, you can tell my cat has been around. Uh, flared out black section. It's not really big, uh, but it's big enough to be able to grip with my big old fingers. Still cat hair there. Um, and me, I definitely want to write with it posted. Now, the person who restored this pen lined up the nib with the imprint. I mean, it's got a great, still fantastic imprint on it, but they lined up the nib with that imprint. Personally, I would have preferred if they had lined up that nib <laughs> with the lever. That's just me and how I prefer it because I like to line up you know, when I post it like this, but that makes it upside down. So, there we go. I just went all fig boot on you. And it's not a bad writing pen. I mean, from the 1930s, Belmont pen made for Rexall drugs. And that warranted, warranted nib, look at that. Look at that line variation that you can get off from it. Nice, flexible nib. It's been a great writer. I used this one for several days straight of, and using it all day long, and it was flawless. Um, and seldom do I write checks, but I had a major car repair, a $2,100 car repair, and I had to write a check for some of it. Uh, and uh, I was using this pen uh, to write out that, uh, that check. So it's a great pen if you can find a, a Belmont. Um, and actually, a lot of third tier manufacturers warranted nibs uh, I haven't really run across a warranted nib that's been bad uh, from the 1930s or so um, you know I like it good pen great looking pen I love the color on it which is one of the reasons I went ahead and bought it even though it's a little smaller than I like but I'm the kind of guy that I'll take it and I'll use it no matter uh, what the deal is I don't exclude the purchase just because it's a little shorter All right. Next, uh, let's see what I want to show you. Ah, I want to show you uh, the pen that I got when I was on the family vacation. We were down in the 
Caribbean. I'm not going to tell you what islands because that may give some stuff away here. I don't have permission to mention uh, the company uh, that I purchased uh, from, uh, but I went to a, uh, a jeweler, a jewelry store, uh, a decent sized jeweler in the Caribbean with my uh, family, and I picked up a pen. I was there buying something for my wife and had the family with me, and they saw my, my hat. Uh, the FountainPenFanatic.com logo on it, and we talked some about um, you know, my uh, my YouTube channel that you're watching right now, and uh, so we talked about pens, and they said, "Hey, well, actually, we got a bunch of Visconti pens over here." And I, uh, I've never seen the Visconti pens there because I've been to that store several times in the past, and uh, so after we conducted a transaction for uh, the purchase I was making for my bride. Um, I went over and I took a look at their pen case, and i got to be honest, now this is why I'm, I don't mention the company. They knew nothing, really, about the pens that they had. They, they knew Zippo, uh, in essence, and so they showed me a case, and they had a lot of, they did have some Visconti pens, um, but they had mostly roller balls or ball points. They had a few fountain pens that were in there. Uh, they had some uh, Visconti Divinas. They, they had um, a one Visconti Homo Sapiens uh, Florentine Hills. Uh, they had uh, a couple of Pelicans. Um, they had a limited edition Delta that was still there, and it's not one of the prettier Deltas in, in my opinion. Uh, but um, I basically uh, shared with them a little bit. I couldn't stay there forever, but I gave them about a half an hour uh, class or, or lecture, if you will, going over uh, fountain pens versus ball points versus uh, roller balls, uh, what collectors are looking for. Um, what some of the value was, because some of their pens were a little overpriced uh, for what they were. For instance, charging uh, the price you would pay for a fountain pen for a uh, rollerball or a ballpoint. So, um, but you know, we we got to talking, and uh, uh, this is a uh, this is their jewelry box that uh, stuff normally would come in. The pen that I got um, did not have the box even though it had been uninked so it was it was a, a new old stock pen so I went ahead and picked it up anyway and after talking with them for a while sharing with them a little bit and quite honestly they probably could have used even a little more information than what I gave them um, I did share with them uh, about uh, stuff like this particular pen here now I'm gonna share uh, this with you as well and this particular pen um, was a Pelican a Pelican M420. The 420, um, it's uh, so you got the the 100s and the 200s on the lower end, the 150 somewhere in there, the one the 120 I've got, um, and they're still a nice pen. And then you got the the upper end, you've got the uh, M800, um, the uh, M1000, the M1000 I've got it writes great. Every Pelican I've got actually writes well. So I went ahead and picked this one up. Uh, they offered me a really good deal, and I've I got a brand new, never been used. Uh, even though, check this out: the production time period uh, for this pen was 2004 to about 2007 for the M420. So you've got that the, the black colored uh, barrel here, and you've got silver on the top and silver on the bottom. Now, had this been gold uh, toned, I'd been I'd been thrilled. But one of the things I noticed about it is that it is sterling silver. Yep, uh, and you look, there's a chemical symbol on here, AG, that tells you that this is actually silver. So the cap on this pen is actually made out of sterling silver. And it does say uh, Pelican Souverain, made in Germany, um, along the, the cap band. And the, the turning knob, because it's a piston filler, is the same sterling silver with the stripey pattern. Okay. Um, then you've got the ink fill window here. And I went ahead and filled this up actually late last night. I had not used this one uh, until today. This is going to be my pen of the day today. And so I played with it a little bit last night. Uh, just to see how well it did, and it did not disappoint at all. Um, so, if you like Pelicans, and if you can find this, um, I, like I said, I found this for um, about a hundred bucks cheaper than I saw uh, being sold used um, by people who restore pens, and this was 
I would say new in box, but it didn't have the box. <laughs> You know what I mean? But it was new. So apparently they had a lot of pens they told me were shipped to them from other stores. And uh, they just had them sitting there. And I think they sold one uh, pen maybe since they've had them. Didn't know anything about them. So uh, it does have an 18 karat gold nib on it. So this is the Pelican, the Pelican M420 with a medium nib buttery smooth absolute buttery smooth writing and a little bit of flex to it look at that pelicans luxury pens this is probably more for um you know very business like looking and, and, I, and i told them at the store one of the things they can always tell a pelican um is because of the pelican's beak and you got the pelican with a single chick on on the uh, finial of the pen, and uh, that uh, tells them that that should be older than like 2003. So that's how I told them. I know it's not that old, but 2004 to 2007. We're still talking. This pen is 12 plus years old, never been used. So, uh, but buttery smooth, absolutely incredibly smooth. And I went ahead and put an ink in here that I hadn't used in quite a while, and I almost forgot about. Um, I just got a wild hair today, and I put in some noodlers. Bad black moccasin. You know, I like uh, I, I like to match the ink to the color of the barrel. So I went ahead and put that in last night. What a great writing pen and uh, did not disappoint so got a great deal on it sterling silver pelican great writer all right now the last one i'm going to share with you uh came in probably the most recent uh, of them all uh this one is a an esterbrook um this one probably is from the early 1950s or so and it doesn't look like your standard esterbrook j or your m2 uh, or your SJ series at all. Uh, but this one here is probably in the CX100 family. Uh, I say family because the, the CX100 was typically um, a, uh, you got a barrel that's going to be smooth without the lever on it and uh, was a cartridge. It was starting to get into cartridge pens in, in the late 1950s or so. It's got the Esterbrook name right on the clip. Uh, and so you've got the silver clip and you've got that one ring around it. Um, so that and, and some of the uh, the nicer ones uh, in, in different Esterbrooks had a nice little metal tip, but it doesn't. So it has just the, uh, you know, that, that plastic. So that's how I kind of knew when I started looking around and poking around. Go to Esterbrook.net. You'll find some good information there. And... Um, this looks to be in the CX100 family. At least that's the way they put it on that website. Now, this particular uh, pen uh, does have like um, I don't know if it's a renew point nib in it. It um, because I I couldn't just twist it out. It sure looks like a renew point nib on it. But this one has like a medium nib I think on it, um, and I can't I don't remember the number right offhand. And I'll put it up on the screen. Uh, but this one, what I like, a, do like about it is that instead of the normal difficulty of getting a sack worked on where you've got to tug and pull and heat in order to get it out, it does twist off. Now, on the flip side, though, what I found is twist, 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 an awful lot. And then you've got this nipple necked down to this nipple, which is nine sixty-fourths of an inch, and I don't have any sacks that are like a number nine sack. And the sack that was on here, uh, quite honestly, when I twisted this off, it, there was there was rubber sack. It was good and pliable. However, it looked like it had been pinched off, and may even have been the wrong sack that was put on here. Because quite honestly, let's see if I can find it offhand. Eh, I'm not going to worry about it now. Uh, but it. It, the sack looked fat or, or very wide and um, and it looked like they had just smushed it down around that um, that little nipple here and quite honestly it looked like it was really too big to go into this barrel so it looked like it was twisted and pinched off here 
um, and then it just left that rubber there. So I'm going to see what I can do about getting it fixed. I'm not really sure if it does take a necked down sack. I've seen them before, uh, but I haven't seen one that goes all the way down. I've seen as small as a number 10. Um, this, look, the, according to my calipers, would take a number 9. So maybe a number 10 would work. Uh, I don't know. But definitely different. It's something for me to work, work at and something for me to investigate a little more. But a nice looking Esther book. And, uh, you know, kind of, uh, I don't know if that's, I can't really call that a, I don't know if it's a gray or more of a putty looking thing. So anyway, um, those are um, my pen mail. One, two, three three, four, five, you know, six or, or so pens. And I, I know this video is a little long and got that uh, subscriber giveaway coming up here in a little bit. I've got some vintage pens, some new pens, um, and a, inks, a bottle of ink, some ink samples, t-shirts, and all that stuff that's going to be included in that prize package. So just keep a lookout for that. So anyway, uh, hey, appreciate you watching. Maybe you've got some ideas to add to your collection. If you're looking for something vintage, maybe something little older modern if you're looking for something vintage if you're looking for uh, something that's uh, quality luxury pen uh, for business use there you go I appreciate y'all watching I appreciate the comments that you folks leave and I really appreciate the fact that uh, this little channel uh, you guys are actually uh, interacting with and spending some moments out of your life watching a, a schmo like me thanks guys bye